Well, I think the list of potentially disruptive technologies is really quite long. I mean, one day we're hearing about cloud computing and mobile uh, allowing exponential growth, and then the next day the emphasis seems to be on uh, artificial intelligence and robotics putting people out of work. But what's really important, I think, is the speed of change. All technologies are uh, advancing at an increasingly rapid rate, and it's the speed of change that actually creates the disruption, not the technology itself. But having said that, um, I think if you think about the list of technologies that we hear about in the media, there is a common theme, and, and that is around digitization. Uh, so it doesn't really matter um, whether we're talking about artificial intelligence, or we're talking about the Internet of Things, uh, or we're talking about virtual reality. There's a common thread beneath all of those that has to do with digital technologies. Well, unless you're in a purely technology-based business, I think business leaders need to be thinking about the changes that the technology is creating in the business environment and not focusing so much just on the technology itself. So what's important for most businesses is the kinds of changes in business models, business processes, uh, manufacturing processes, the way we organize work, the way we organize businesses, rather than the particular technology. So if I were a business leader, I'd be thinking about things like, does the technology change the economies of scale in my sector? Does it um, allow me to defragment a sector or alternatively um, bring a sector together? Uh, does it allow for disintermediation? So those are the kinds of changes in the business context that are taking place. And for most businesses, that's probably more important than the technology itself. Well, of course, like anything, you see a wide range from those who are adapting very well to those who are kind of ignoring that the problem exists. Uh, there are lots of surveys on this, of course, uh, and most of those show that firms are not very well prepared. Uh, in fact, a major study released last year in the New Zealand context uh, showed that only about a third uh, of firms had prepared a digital uh, a plan to address uh, digital issues. Uh, on the other hand, about three-quarters of leaders said, yeah, we know it's a problem. Uh, and if you really delve into that survey, I th one of the interesting findings that I found was that only 10% uh, of business leaders were actually thinking about how digitization will change the product or the service that they offer. And that's really the most fundamental thing um, that could change. I think that leadership uh, in terms of how someone guides an organization through these changes is going to become a key competitive advantage. Uh, so you can imagine that what's important is that someone have a very clear vision, but they be very adaptable in how that vision gets implemented because they have to constantly learn and change and be adaptive as the environment around them uh, is changing. I think it's also important that the leader not be phased by change, that they be very comfortable in an uncertain environment and that they can share that comfort with others in their organization. Because as we know, everyone isn't comfortable with the idea of change. So a good leader in the modern environment will be someone who is able to make sense of that environment for the people around them and give them frameworks so that suddenly people have clarity even when everything around them looks like chaos. Leaders who um, rely on their position or on their expertise are going to be increasingly challenged because no one is going to be able to stay on top of those kinds of things. So what's really important for a leader is to be able to hire the best people and to trust them to move ahead. Leaders need to be collaborative uh, in, in that sense uh, and engaging with not only their employees but with the external environment. Well, first off, of course, universities, like all businesses, are being disrupted. Uh, and to a certain extent, universities more so than many other kinds of businesses because much of what we deal with is knowledge, uh, which is easily digitized. So we're going through all of these challenges ourselves, and we're learning by going through that process. But equally, business schools have a role working alongside businesses to help not only practicing managers deal with these issues, uh, but the new younger students uh, who are going to enter a very different uh, future uh, when they enter the work world. Uh, so on many levels, 
we're dealing with not only existing businesses and learning from those businesses and bringing that into some of the things we do, uh, but also sharing some of our thought leadership back to those businesses to help them adapt and change. And then together, business schools and businesses are working with some of the younger students to help them prepare.